Hey guys, it's uh, it's time for a little demo. I wanted to describe a way in which angular frequency and angular velocity, how they're related, how they're different, and how it can be confusing. So, first of all, at some point in my introductory mechanics class, I always have a slide like this. When we're just getting ready to do rotational motion, I remind the troops about position, velocity, and acceleration, the fact that we've learned about mass and momentum, force, and kinetic energy, and review the relationships between those guys, and then point out that there's an analogous variable for each of these concepts in translational motion. There's an analogous concept in rotational motion, like angle is sort of analogous to position, Angular velocity is analogous to velocity. It's the rate of change of the angle. Angular acceleration is the rate of change of the angular velocity. Uh, instead of mass, we have this thing called rotational inertia, which sort of behaves like mass in many of the equations. In angular momentum, there's this concept of spin angular momentum, that something can be spinning, and as a result, it can have an angular momentum associated with it. Instead of force, we have torque. And in translational motion, there's a Newton's second law for force, which relates the rate of change of momentum to the net force. And there is an analogous angular rotational version of the same idea, which is that the net torque is equal to the rate of change of the angular momentum. And finally, when something is spinning, it has kinetic energy, not by virtue of the fact that its center of mass is moving, but by virtue of the fact that it's rotating the parts of the object are spinning about the center of mass. There, there's relative motion of the object, of the pieces of the object, the components of the object, moving about the center of mass, and that's the rotational kinetic energy. And this is all fine. Everybody's happy about this, at least for a while. But then we always get to simple harmonic motion, and we get these new equations that relate position, velocity, and acceleration of an object that's oscillating to the amplitude and frequency of the oscillation. And the, and the character that's used to represent angular frequency is omega. And it happens to be the same Greek character that's used to represent the rate of change of an angle, which is omega. And the difference here is fairly clear when we're talking about something that's oscillating because it's wiggling, and that's very different from spinning. And so there's little confusion about the meaning of omega, in this case, when you have a block or a mass that's wiggling. But then we invariably get to the pendulum, and we talk about the fact that the angle that the pendulum makes with the vertical is a very, it varies in time. And there's a rate of change of angle, and a second derivative of angle with respect to time. And of course, there's also this angular frequency in the equations. And so we have room for some confusion on the topic. And my point today is to simply help clarify that confusion, or to hopefully eliminate that confusion. But let's, let's move ahead. I have a little demo to show. OK, so here I have a mass on a spring. And I'm going to be graphing displacement as a function of time. And just for reference, I've put here the equations that we use to describe these guys. And you can see that uh, as the mass wiggles up and down and we graph displacement versus time, indeed it does trace out something like a sine function. And uh, the velocity, of course, goes like the derivative of that, and the acceleration goes like the derivative of that. So that gives you a sense of how it's going to go. Let's, um, I want to show you the phase at the same time. So let me add a graph that also displays the phase. Let's look at that. Okay, so same situation, except now we have the uh, displacement as a function of the phase. So I'll go ahead and start it going. And everything looks about the same, except that now you see that the uh, I've got the phase here, and it's pretty well matched up to the other picture. It's just that it's just that now, uh, by the time the thing gets about to its peak here, that should be a phase of about um, pi over two. And by the time it gets one half of a cycle, we've got a phase of about pi. There you go, three quarters pi. And then one full cycle, of course, is going to be right around two pi. 
So there you can see that that's 2 pi. So the point is, <clears throat> instead of graphing displacement versus time, here I have a displacement versus, versus phase. And one full cycle corresponds to a phase of about 2 pi. Now what do I mean by phase? Phase is just omega times t. It's the thing that goes into the sine function. It's called the phase, and it's sort of like an angle. But I, wanna, I want to uh, mm, basically support the idea that it's, uh, it's an angle, so that's the next demo. Okay, so here I have a similar setup, uh, the box going up and down. Here I have a, a sphere that's going to spin around in a circle. Uh, you'll see that in a moment. Um, and then I have a, this uh, white stuff here. This is supposed to be some kind of like a chart paper. The chart paper is moving to the right, and it's just going to track the position of the block as it goes up and down. So let's see how that works. There we go. So the chart paper is moving to the right, and you can see that this is tracing out something like a sine function. I'd like to draw your attention to this thing going around. Notice that this is uniform circular motion, this red sphere, and the y-coordinate of the sphere is equal to the y-coordinate of the a box at every point in time. And the notion is that simple harmonic motion is just like uniform circular motion except it's projected onto one direction. So if you take the y-component of this guy it's always equal to the y component of the box, so the box going up and down behaves just like the y component of an object moving in a circle. That's the idea. Now, what happens to the angle that this object makes with the horizontal direction as a function of time? The answer is it just grows uniformly with time, and so we have the angular velocity of this object moving around happens to be equal to the angular frequency of this simple harmonic motion. And that's the way in which angular frequency and angular velocity sort of come to have the same letter. The angle here called, is called the phase. It's the phase of this simple harmonic motion. Um, if we make a graph, let me go ahead and graph the, uh, the phase here so you can see what it looks like. Um, and I'll put that in the same chart. Let's run this thing again. And here we have a graph of the phase, and we'll start the thing going. See, there we go. And the phase, you can see, is just increasing linearly with time. And uh, one way to think about omega is to say that it is the rate at which the phase angle is increasing. In other words, it's d theta dt still, but it's the d theta dt of the analogous circular motion. It's the rate of change of the phase. Not in, in the physical system, this object is just wiggling up and down. There is nothing spinning or rotating at all. And so the omega that shows up in the sine of omega t, this guy here, is simply the phase, and omega is the rate at which the phase is increasing. Now, where it gets confusing is when we introduce the pendulum. So let's do that next. All right, so here I have a, uh, a pendulum that's going to swing a little bit back and forth. And uh, I've got chart paper now moving down instead of across, as before. And also I have the uh, theta as a function of time showing up here. So let's go ahead and just run this thing. You can see how it goes. Pendulum swings back and forth. The angle as a function of time advances. Again, we have something that appears to be very nearly a sign. It is, in fact, quite close to an exact sign. It turns out with the pendulum, there is a small approximation. That is, when the angle gets too big, then this thing deviates from a sign. But for small angles, it's basically a sine function. And so, as you would expect, you have theta as a function of time. And this is the one that's confusing. d theta dt as a function of time is the derivative of theta as a function of time. But another name for d theta dt, of course, is omega, the angular velocity of the pendulum. But here we have an omega, which is the angular frequency of the oscillation. Now, angular frequency is the rate of change of the phase. And how, fi how far do you figure the phase has gotten by the time you go through one full cycle? The answer is 2 pi. But notice the angle of the pendulum itself never gets anywhere near 2 pi. This is a very small angle. It only goes up to a quarter of a radian here, at the, even at the maximum. 
um, 2 pi is 6 radians. So there's a big difference between the rate of change of the phase and the rate of change of the angle. Just to make that difference even more clear, I'm going to I'm going to graph the same thing except this time I'm going to graph it with the angular velocity of the pendulum drawn in there. So this cyan curve is d theta dt. Notice that it's very different from omega, the angular frequency. The angular frequency here is going to be something like uh, 2 pi divided by um, the period. The period it looks like is about three and a half seconds. 2 pi is about 6, so we're looking at something on the order of 2 for the angular frequency. And the angular frequency is constant. The phase advances at a constant rate. So this omega is a constant. d theta dt is going up and down all over the place because the angle the pendulum makes switches back and forth. And it has a maximum value here. You can read it right off the graph. It looks like it's about 0.44, nowhere near 2. Okay, so that means that omega and d theta dt are very different things. d theta dt is the slope of theta as a function of time graph, and you can see that that slope is not constant. It goes all over the place. I hope that helps. I know it's confusing. But just be careful when you use these letters to make sure you know what they mean in different contexts.